Hi everyone, this is Sherry Clark, and welcome to Courage to be Seen. This show is for anyone who longs to take charge of their life, to create more success, accomplish their dreams, and to live in inspiring ways to be powerfully visible and visibly powerful. I will be sharing stories with you from my own career and experiences, from leading engineering teams for the last 20 years, and also from interactions I have been blessed to have with people I've met from around the world. I want to give you the tools, techniques, strategies, and inspiration so you can be the best you. You can achieve the success you desire, personally and professionally. Being authentic, confident, and empowered are the keys to success and the life that you want. You can have the courage to be seen. Hi, I'm Sherry Clark, and welcome to Courage to Be Seen, the show that focuses on helping you achieve the success that you desire. I'll share with you the tools and techniques, stories and strategies, so you can accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish in your life. I want to help you be more authentic, more confident, more empowered. These are the keys that I have found that have brought incredible amount of success to, to my life. So I want to start today with a question and a little bit of reflection. And I want you to think about the last week and whatever you did in the last week, just whatever kind of activities. And I want you to compare a little bit to how would be a typical week for you two years ago? So it doesn't have to be anything specific. It could be just the general everyday things, but how does your last week compare to a week that you've had two years ago? You know, if I look at my week, I would say, you know, what things are really different. Um, today, I go to work into the office three days a week. Our company goes into the office on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. You know, two years ago, I commuted into the office every day. That was that was definitely standard. That um, we'd also, I would say, what one of the big differences, you know, now we have trouble finding a nanny. And my husband works from home, so he's able to meet my son's bus when he uh, comes home in the afternoon. And we've been just making do that way because with the labor shortages, it's, it's just too difficult. Versus two years ago, you know, every day we had a nanny that came and met my son's bus and, and took him and did activities with him until we were done working. We require masks in the office. You may, may too. Um, it's kind of interesting the other day when I was running into uh, one of my coworkers in, in the office, we were getting up on the elevator and, and he was like, oh yeah, you know, a new week, we have to uh, get, the, get the mask back on versus on the weekend, pretty much most of our lives have gone mask free. Now, depending on what city you live in, you still might have masks that uh, many of the big cities are requiring masks. And um, a lot of the smaller areas, you can do a lot of things without masks, but we require masks in the office. So people, for you know, the weekends and part of their life, they're without masks, and then part of their life, they're with masks. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but definitely not something we did two years ago. With that, Jared has to wear a mask to school every day. A um, couple other things, you know, I notice if I think about my last week is there's a lot of help wanted signs pretty much everywhere. It seems like everybody is is looking for help, and I'm sure you've noticed if you go shopping. Um, there's just shortages here and there of different different things kind of everywhere. I never really worried about what was going to be available in the grocery store a couple of years ago. I pretty much expected when I went to the store, whatever they normally had, you know, was, was going to be there. So your life, you know, might look kind of like this. Maybe you have some even more significant things. You know, maybe you've changed jobs, which I have actually changed jobs too. I'm, um, you know, in a very different industry. But can you identify with these type of things and what's different in our life today versus two years ago? Now you think, why, why are you having us do this particular exercise, Sherry? And it might be a little controversial, but the point I'm trying to make is that 
you know, we've been dealing with COVID for over a year and a half now. And while it's still affecting a lot of people, and there's still a lot of people getting sick, and, and, uh, and unfortunately, some of them are, are, are dying, and I don't think we should minimize that at all. It's been going on a long time. And I don't think you can really say that what we're living today, for most of us, is an emergency. You don't have an emergency that lasts a year and a half, right? There should have been time in the last year and a half to make a plan. So it's no longer an emergency. And if it's still an emergency and we don't have a plan, it's just because we decided not to make one. Not that we didn't have time to make one. The first couple of weeks, the first couple of months, you could say we didn't know what we're dealing with. And all right, it's a state of emergency and, and, and we're not sure what to do. But now a year and a half later, more than a year and a half later, I would say it's time for us to kind of figure out how to move on with our life. And so the inspiration for this podcast was an article I read, and it really divided people into three categories. The first one talked about people that are struggling. And we've talked on podcasts before about burnout, and, and you could check out um, that past episode if, if you'd like. But really, you know, how to deal with, with burnout. And, and there are people that are struggling. There are people that have lost work. There are people that um, unfortunately have lost loved ones. And, and all the extra stuff, you know, of what I even talked about and dealing with childcare and trying to work and uh, maybe virtual school on top of it. There are a lot of people still, still struggling. And we can't, uh, we can't deny that. However, there's a second group of people. And it was funny because you really don't hear about or talk about in the media a lot about this second group of people. But this group are people that are really thriving in the current environment. And it's bigger than, than you'd expect. There are people that are incredibly happy right now. Maybe they've changed jobs. Maybe they've changed locations. Maybe they've learned to appreciate more of what they have and their life is just a little bit simpler because they've gotten rid of stuff that was so draining to them that the stuff that they are still doing and continuing to do is much more aligned with what they like, but they're really thriving. And I love to hear that there are people that are really thriving right now. And I think we all kind of want to, to be that way. But the third category, I'd say is the people that are surviving. Right. They they're kind of stuck in the rut. You would say that they're really suffering, but you wouldn't say they're thriving. They're like in that in that middle zone and they're just like caught in this um, regular rhythm. Right. We've been going through now for over a year and a half of. I don't know when this is going to end or just getting through day after day after day. I don't think anyone wants to be in that survival category very much longer. And if you're listening today, I'm sure you don't want to be there either. Now, you may be. It might not have been your choice. Maybe it's just by default you're, you're there. But if I could do something, I would want to help you move, no matter what category you're in, into thriving, right? We should all be there. We want to thrive every, every day. So, so that's what we're going to focus on today is how can we take steps? What can we do in our life? Not to survive, but to thrive. One of my favorite quotes is, if your dreams do not scare you, they're not big enough, by Ellen Johnson Sherpa. Think about that, right? Like, if you are making dreams that are big enough to scare you, they're probably just way too small. And um, I have that quote posted in multiple places. It is one of my, my favorite quotes. And so for a few moments here, I want to give you permission. I want to give you permission not, not to feel guilty, not to worry about the people that um, you know are struggling and are facing burnout, but I want you to take care of yourself, do a little bit of self-care, and let's talk about ways that you can work on thriving. And so, yes, you can do it. Yes, you have permission to do it. And um, it's really okay to have this, have this conversation. The first part of it, though, is you have to think about what does thrive mean to you? Because thrive for me might mean something completely different for you. And so, so let, let's talk a little bit about that because we all have different goals in life. And sometimes we don't like to say that they're goals and we think too much about work when we think about goals. But um, 
Goals can be personal too, right? One of my goals is I want to get rid of stuff. Like I just, I'm just tired of having such materialistic things. And so when we moved um, last year, or I guess it was, it was still this year, but uh, at the beginning of the year, when we moved, we purposely bought a smaller house that made us go through our things and we still are doing it and downsides. We just don't have as much space as we had before. That might not be your goal. Your goal might be you want that bigger house. You're finally, you're tired of, of not enough space for all, all your things and you want more space. So you and I don't have to have the same definition of what it means to thrive, but you need to know what it means to thrive for, for yourself. So the first thing, and I've talked about some of this with goal setting before. So a lot of these steps, you know, you might say don't sound completely new, but I want to think about them in a, in a little different environment because we're in a different place. And it's been a long time since we, we talked about this. One of the number one problems I find that people do when it comes to any kind of goal setting. So I want you to set some goals of what it means for you to thrive. But too often, like we, we don't want to say what those goals are. We don't put them down. We would much rather pick from the menu. Like if these are the potential optional goals, like I want one, three, and five. Now, why, why do we do this? Why do we have such a hard time saying what we really want? And instead, we just pick from the menu. Because if they're on the menu, we know that they're appropriate. We know that, that there's a chance that people could actually reach them, that maybe they're, they're expected. And you're not so much worried about the approval of others. Well, none of that really matters because the truth is when you are thinking about what it means for you to thrive, you don't have to tell anyone else, at least not for now. This is maybe much better done in a personal journal while you're getting used to it and figure it out for yourself. At some point, if it's appropriate, you can share it because I don't want you picking from the menu. I want you to know that the whole universe is out there for years to, for the taking. And you need to define for yourself what, what you really want, what are your desires, and what should you go after. So for a few moments, I want you to think about for 2022, you know, what are some of your top dreams and desires? You maybe you want to take like 20 minutes. And so if you're listening to this live, you know, maybe this is something you have to do later. And you can come back and re-listen to, to this. If, um, if you're listening to this at home and it's already up on the podcast, you know, you can uh, push pause and take some time and write out, you know, what, what are those things that you would love to do? If this was just the most incredible year of your life, what are those things that you would like to accomplish this year? After you create the list, I want us to look at the list, not necessarily to worry about and nitpick what's on the list, but I want you to, to look at the list as a whole and kind of just to understand, you know, how good are you at even thinking about what you want to do to thrive? First of all, you can just look at how long is the list. If the list is too short, then you probably need to spend a little bit more time. You're probably filtering out things before you even get a chance to put them down on the paper. What did I talk about earlier? Being appropriate, being likely that you're actually going to achieve it. You're worried about what others are going to think of it. You know, take all that stuff out. Just, just think about what would you love to do here in 2022 and, and write it down on the paper. Maybe you have a set time. So go for 20 minutes and keep writing until all that time is done to make your list a little bit longer. At this moment, I'm not saying you have to accomplish it all, but what are those things that you would like to do? On the other hand, if your list is like, whoa, way, way, way long, there's kind of two things you might be doing. One, you know, like I love to travel. So I could write, you know, a hundred different goals around things that I haven't seen in the world yet, but that's, that's not necessarily the most useful kind of goals, unless there's like one or two specific places you really, really want to go. Don't make a laundry list of every single city that you could, you could visit. Um, so you, with that, I'm kind of thinking like it could be like the same goal over and over again with a slight, slight tweak. You know, you could maybe kind of lump a few of those together. The other thing you can do if your list is too long 
is I kind of practice it cutting it in half. So let's say you've got 100 things on your list, get it down to 50. That way you at least filter out some of the maybe less less um, less important to you goals for, for, for right now. Then if you look at your list, the second step is that can you put it in categories? You know, maybe put all the travel things together. Are there finance things, et cetera? But see if there are some, some categories. That just kind of helps you be more aware of of your goals. When, once you have those categories, then, then you should think of like, how many categories are there? Is there a good, maybe all the goals are in one category. Maybe all you can think about was travel or all you're thinking about is finances. Now there can be reasons for that. You know, if, if all your goals are financial related, well, but maybe one, money's really important to you and that's completely okay. Two, maybe, Money's been very scarce in your life. And so you want that security from it. And, and that's okay too. However, if you don't have a balance of categories, I would say at minimum, you would want to have at least one, but maybe a few goals or items in these five categories. Career, health, financial, family and or friends, and personal growth. So overall, you want to have at least a little bit that you're thinking about in the next year in, in those five categories. So if you did your list and you're like, oh, I got three categories, maybe take a little bit of time and say, okay, hey, what about personal growth? What do I want to do? How can I thrive? Maybe you want to take a painting class or a singing class or just something that you've never done before. That all can help you know, bring you alive. So take some time and make sure that you, know, you have career, health, finance, friends and family, and personal growth. Those I find if people have at least some in those areas, then, um, then they have a pretty well-rounded set of, of goals that would help them um, really, really do well and, and thrive in, in their life. One of the things I like people to do when they create these lists, you know, normally when you create a list, you put a title at the top. And I've been using a couple of different words. And so maybe you just thought, well, this is what Sherry said, and you put it at the top. But, but what did you call your list? Maybe you didn't put anything there. And you said, oh, and you just started writing. Some people put goals at the top. Other people call it a dream list. And so others say desires. You know, as I say that, how does that bring up different emotions in you? The truth is when I hear goals, I usually think about work. You know, I think of goals and objectives and, and maybe I've just been in the corporate world too long, but I tend to think really very objectively when I think about goals. And I usually think towards my, my career. When I think about dreams, I think more personal. I think there's things like travel that I want to go do. Those things that may or may not actually happen. They may or may not be approved by everybody, but you know, those kind of far off things. And when I talk about my desires, it's funny because in some respects, I don't like sharing desires. You know, it's like those seem incredibly personal, but they don't have to be. But it's just funny and I don't know, when you think about your list and how what you called it, did you even think about how to title it? And do you get any kind of different emotions if you title it different things? If you do, sometimes it can be worth, you know, redoing the exercise with a different name at the top. Um, also, when I think of goals, many times I get very specific. You know, like my 401k, I want it to be this. I want to put X amount of money in it. When I think about dreams, it's not as specific. It's more like I want, you know, a million dollar house or something crazy, right? It, it's more um, aspirational, I would, I would say. So you can take some time and, and think about your list and you can make some changes to it just by changing the name of it. So maybe take a new piece of paper. And if you didn't call it anything, pick one. Make a dream list. 
see if making a dream list gives you any new ideas or make a desire list. If you really want to drive, right? We're not saying goodbye. We're not saying it's tomorrow. We want to thrive. Then you really want to be working on your desires. Those things that are deep inside of you that, that, that motivate you to get up every day and be excited to go to work. And you can do that if you're working on your desires. The next step that I'd like you to think about when you look at your list is to take the items on your list and see like how many of them now after reflecting on them for a little bit, do you really think are high, medium or low in terms of you being able to actually accomplish them next year? Maybe some of them aren't intended to. You know, if I talk about my travel list, like I wanna to go to Antarctica. I have to admit I'm not going to Antarctica next year. It still would be on my list. Why would I say I'm not going next year? Well, because it takes a long term, a lot, a lot of, of planning like in advance, right? Like there's only a certain window you can go right now. I don't actually want to go in the window that you have to go to a trip to Antarctica because of my son's in, in school and my older son with his swimming at the University of Kentucky. Like, you know, like that window doesn't work in my life right now. Yeah, in a couple of years, that will be a different story. And so I would have to rate that alone. Now, it's, it's something like I'm very passionate. I really want to go to visit Antarctica. But it's low that I'm going to accomplish it next year. So it's okay to have goals on your list that are, are low. But I take it and then rate each one, high, medium, or low. And how many of each category do you have? In fact, if you have all highs, on one hand, it's great. You think you can accomplish them all. On the other hand, maybe maybe they aren't aspirational enough. Maybe they aren't really things that'll make you thrive, right? If they're all low, it is going to be really hard to keep the motivation up to keep accomplishing things. That or you're just not giving yourself enough credit, right? You want to have a mixture of high, medium, and low. And so um, take some time and focus on adding a few more to your list if, if your balance isn't isn't correct. I do want you to take a little bit of time now. You know, we talked about goals being like appropriate, how other people would, would view them. Are there anything on your list that you would say you put on there really because it's someone else's goal? You know, sometimes we do that. We, we prioritize things in our life that really aren't our goals. It's not something that we maybe ever actually wanted to, to accomplish, but we thought we had to. You know, people go to school and college because their parents wanted them to get a degree. They wanted to, you know, what is your career? It's more of what your parents wanted, or that was the expectation versus what really is in your heart. So if you have any of those kind of goals, you know, on your life, on your list that really aren't yours, they're not going to help you thrive. I'm going to give you permission to cross them off. Don't, don't keep them. Let them go. You may not be able to get it out of your life immediately, but you sure can get it off your list immediately. Just, just cross it off. The next thing is we're reflecting on our list. I have to ask you that um, what if others saw your list? How, how, would, how would it make you feel? You know, I'm not saying you have to share it, but sometimes we don't want other people to know. And it's just good to know emotionally kind of how you feel. And the last thing is how long have things been on your list? If this has been on your list for a long, long time, then either you need to start working on it. That's great that you're listening and we want to take action. Or two, maybe it's time to refresh and stop using the same, same old list. The quote for you is, no matter how small you start, always dream and think big. If you start with small thoughts, then you'll stay with small thoughts. By Stephen Richards. That's a great great quote, right? We don't want, we don't want to think small. We want to think big. So, so if you need to now go back 
and create a new list, right? Have your original list and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing, there's not a right or wrong answer here, but take some time, make some goals, make some dreams, listen desires, see how that changes for you. Go back through and kind of then look, is your list balanced? Do you have health goals? Do you have career goals? Do you have friends and family goals? Do you have financial goals? Do you have personal development? Self-care is huge. Put your goals in there around it. Make sure you have long-term goals, short-term goals. And then we have to think about, you know, what is, if we look through this whole, whole list, what can you start doing immediately? So as if your list is too long, you're going to have to prioritize some of them, right? We, we talked about if it's too long, can you cut it in half? We talked about different categories. So maybe you could pick one goal out of each category. If you have 20 things on your list, you can't work on, on all of them. You can work on five, right? If you think about health and career and friends and family and finance and personal development, you can move forward a goal in all five categories at one time. That's reasonable, right? Maybe use that. Maybe pick one of each of those categories. Maybe you want to pick one short-term goal, one medium-term goal, and one long-term goal off your list to, to start with. And that way you are looking to get something short-term. Like how, how can I get like a, a quick win? Feel good. Like show that you can accomplish something. But then know that you're working on that long-term goal. It may take a few years to get, but you don't want to give up on it. So you need to take, a, take your list, your new list, that's full of goals, dreams, and desires. Go back through the steps, right, of kind of how long it is. Make sure it's appropriate. Do you have the categories? Do you have enough different types of goals? Hopefully you've already crossed off all the stuff that isn't really yours. And then I want you to pick. I want you to pick a few of those items. I'd say no more than five. And if you're not sure which five to pick, pick one for career, one for finances, one for friends and family, one for health, and one for personal development. And then take that list and write down something. Something that you can do immediately. Something that you can even do tonight to get it moving. What are you going to do by, by this weekend? The faster you write down something on your list and start to take action on it, it'll make that goal more in movement, right? You don't want it just to be on a piece of paper. You don't want everything to only be in your journal. Once you take your five goals, and it could be three if that's what you want, but write down a list, write down for each one what something you can do. Now, sometimes people don't know, well, I don't even know how to get started. But let's say I wanted to travel to Iceland. Let's say that was one of my goals. Well, my first, my first thing could be to research, maybe get a book on Iceland, maybe find out tours of Iceland, you know, like and get some information. Like that could be step one. That's actually not that hard to do some step like that. You want to find reviews, find, you know, what are the most best hotels? What city do you go visit when you go to Iceland? You know, where do you go see the Northern Lights? What time of the year is the best to visit? That? Like that research, you can start doing now before, before you ever go on the trip. You're going to have to start to understand how much it costs, right? You can put a budget together. Do you have the finances or not? And you need a plan for that. That's how you can get started right now. Let's say you have a goal, a fitness goal, right? Well, maybe you need to research, you know, what fitness classes are available. Are you going to do it online or are you going to go someplace? But, but figure out what that step one is. What can you do ideally tonight? If not, at least by the end of the week. You have to start taking action and set up a weekly plan. Not just today, but you have to take that initial action. But then what's your review cycle? Is this a weekly goal? Is it a monthly goal? Is it a quarterly goal? If this isn't something that you can accomplish in the next uh, year or two, you know, maybe reviewing it quarterly is okay. Many goals, I would say you should at least review monthly. I know like all my finance goals, 
we review them on a monthly basis. That seems to work for my, my husband and I. So, so figure out one, what is that very first action that you can do before the end of the week, but ideally by tonight. Two, what's your review cycle so that you can, you can go forward. I think if you follow these steps and take some time to think about what does thriving mean to you and start to take action, you won't be in that middle category. It's unfortunate that people that have burnout, and we'll talk more about that, and we don't want people down there. We want, though, to move as many people from the middle that are just merely surviving today into thriving tomorrow. That is the goal. That's where we want everyone to be. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I encourage you to subscribe, you know, wherever you listen to this podcast. So that way you get notification for, um, for my next show. Check out my website at couragetobeseen.com. There you can uh, find my contact information, learn more about my coaching program. I'd love to hear from you and get um, ideas of what you'd like to hear in, in the next show. So until then, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've been inspired to take action on at least one thing starting today. To learn more, check out CourageToBeSeen.com. There you'll find my blog and additional resources, including you can download a copy of 10 Ways to Live a More Courageous Life. Thanks again for listening and make sure you tune in next time to learn additional ways to have the courage to be seen in your own life.